Hello everyone, welcome back to our third yoga story video. This time we are going to be looking at the story The Grateful Giraffe. This is a new story, we've never done it at North Bay before, so I hope you do enjoy it. Um, in this story we're going to be introduced to lots of different animals, we're going to move our bodies as if we are those animals, but we're also going to start thinking about our feelings and what makes us feel. Each feeling that each of our animals are experiencing. So our first animal we are going to meet is a grateful giraffe. And the giraffe is really, really grateful today because it's been able to return to the wild and it goes out into the open space and can breathe in the fresh air. So it's feeling particularly grateful for that. So we're going to move into our first pose, which is our giraffe pose. So we're going to stand on our mat. We are going to put one foot in front of us, one foot behind us and point it to the side. We're going to clasp our hands together, we're going to raise them really, really high as if they're our giraffe neck, all the way up and we're going to bend over to our toe and bring our giraffe neck up and bend. Time up and bend. Lovely. So that was our grateful giraffe pose. And I want you to think about some things that make you feel grateful like our giraffe. So I'm going to give an example. So when we feel grateful for something, it means we want to say thank you for something. So I've had some ideas and I think it would be nice for us to say thank you for being healthy, thank you to our mummies and daddies for looking after us, thank you to our friends for being kind to us, thank you to our teachers for supporting us, thank you to all of my toys that have <coughs> let me play with them. I like to say thank you to people that listen to me, I like to say thank you to my home for letting me stay safe. And I'd like to say thank you for being allowed to go on a nice long walk with my family. So, I will put some examples, some symbols in the comments here so you can use those with your child so they can choose what they want to feel grateful for today. Write us a comment in the comments section and let us know what they've chosen. Our next animal we are going to meet in our story is a really fussy flamingo who is eating her snack but she's very, very fussy and she doesn't really enjoy it. So, we are going to move into our flamingo pose. And we're going to stand up on our mat again. This one again is very tricky. So, we're going to stand on one leg. So I'm going to bring one foot up to the side of my calf, clasp my hands together, and reach all the way up to the ceiling. Very hard not to wobble in this one. And whoop, back down again. And we're going to swap legs. So we're going to put this foot on the floor. We'll bring our other leg, other foot up to our calf. Whoop. <laughs> we are going to bring our arms. Fantastic, so that was our fussy flamingo. And I again have had a little think about things that we might feel fussy over. And I think sometimes we're a bit fussy with our food, sometimes we're fussy with things we drink, sometimes we're fussy with things that we touch, and different textures and materials, sometimes we're fussy with like people touching us and that's okay. Sometimes we're fussy with the clothes that we like to wear, and sometimes we're fussy if we don't want to wear our shoes and our socks and again that's okay. So again, put some symbols in the comments section here. Feel free to use those with your child so they can <coughs> give them a couple of prompts to choose things that make them feel fussy. Or there's some space there for you to choose. Our next animal that we are going to meet in our story is a really 
caring koala. And our caring koala is cuddling her baby nice and tight and making sure it feels safe. So we're going to move into our koala pose. And again, it's an upstanding pose, we're going to stand up on our mats. We are going to bring one foot out and wrap it around our other leg. We're going to bring both of our arms up. We're going to cross them over, wrap them around and try and hold on to your other hand. Our caring koala, almost as if you're hugging your baby koala, nice and tight. And we're holding for five, four, three, two, one. Lovely, big stretch out and sit back down. And again, I had a little think earlier about what we, how we can show people that we care about them, just like our caring koala did. So, to show people that we care about them, we might give them a nice big hug. We make sure that we listen to them. We smile at them. We might give, <coughs> give them a call and check in to see how they are, particularly at the moment. We might ask our mummies and daddies to text their parents and see if we can arrange a FaceTime with them or a Zoom call. And we show people that we care by playing nicely with them. That's our siblings, our brothers and our sisters, our cousins, our mummies and daddies, and our friends at school. So those are lots of different examples of how we show that we care. Again, they're in the comments section below. Feel free to use those, or if you'd like to encourage your child to think of their own answers to things that they do to show that they care about people, feel free. Our next animal is a excited, elephants okay so this is another standing pose but we've lots of standing poses in our yoga today so we're going to stand up on our mat we're going to bring both legs apart now this is a slightly different elephant pose to the one we did in our first yoga video but i'd like you to give this variation a go as well so legs nice and wide they might come off of your mat slightly just to keep them nice and wide and if you can i'd like you to Turn your heels out and point your toes in towards the middle of your mat. And from here, we're just going to lean forwards and put our hands on the floor. You should feel a nice big stretch in the back of your legs there. And we're going to hold it for five, four, three, two, Rolling up slowly and sitting back on our mat. So that was our really excited elephant. And again, I had a little think about things that made me feel excited and things that might make you feel excited. And I thought we might be excited by our toys that we get to play with, our favourite toys. We might be excited by our iPad, which I'm sure lots of you are. We might be excited to go to the park or to go for a walk. We'll be excited to see our friends and see our family. We'll be excited to go to soft play for a day out. We might even be excited to go to school. And one thing that I'm particularly excited by is my favourite food. So, again, use the symbols in the comments below to help your child choose something that makes them feel excited. And again, if they're able to, they can choose their own. Our next animal today is a frog. And our frog is feeling really really frustrated and it's feeling frustrated but it, because it just can't catch that fly that it's been trying to catch all day and it's getting really annoyed by it so we are going to move into our frustrated frog pose so we're going to stand up again we're going to have both of our toes pointed to the side of our mats corner of our mat sorry we're going to bend down Till we're crouching. And on the count of three, we're going to jump up like a frog. Are you ready? One, two, three, rip it! Whoa, that hurt my legs. <laughs> I 
good. You ready again? One, two, three. Rip it. Oh, one more. I want to see who can jump the highest this time. One, two, three. Rip it. Lovely. Oh, sit back down. So that was our frustrated frog pose. And I had a little think about all of the things that could make us feel a bit frustrated from time to time. And I thought, <clears throat> maybe we might get a bit frustrated and a bit angry if people aren't listening to us, or if people are being unkind to us. Maybe we might become a bit frustrated if things are a bit different. And sometimes we might get a bit frustrated if someone says to us, no. Or if they tell us to stop doing something that we're really enjoying. Maybe we might be <coughs> frustrated when things that we are enjoying are finished. And it's a little bit frustrating when we're not being understood. So, again, use the symbols in the comment section below. Feel free to pause here, go through all of the poses we've been doing so far, all of the symbols, have a conversation with your child about all of the different emotions we've been <coughs> speaking about so far. Now we're going to move on to our playful dog pose. Okay, so our playful dog is chasing its puppy around the park, trying to catch and snatch its ball. So we're going to move into our playful dog pose. And this one, I'm pretty sure we've done this one quite a few times before. So we're going to come up first onto our hands and our knees. Put both hands firmly on your mat, underneath your shoulders. We're going to tuck our toes under and on the count of three, we're going to lift our bottoms in the air. Are you ready? One, two, three, lift. And lean back. If you can, try and put your heels on the floor. And we'll hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Lovely. Come back down onto your knees and then roll over onto your bottom. So, there's many, many, many times and many, lots and lots and lots of different things we can do when we are feeling playful. So, we might like to jump on a trampette, or we might just like to jump anyway. We might like to do some dancing. We might like to sing. We could ride our bikes. We could do some role play with our siblings. We could laugh. But lots and lots of things that we do when we're feeling particularly playful. We might jump on our trampolines, or we might just jump around the house, jump off the sofa. Don't really recommend that. Uh, we might do some dancing. We might do some singing. We might ride our bike. We might do some role play with our brothers and sisters and our mummies and daddies. We might laugh. We could run and we could do some climbing, which I know lots of you like to do. So, pause here, use the symbols in the comments, tell me what do you do when you're feeling playful, 